Right now, we are part way along one of the toughest tracks in far north Queensland. And this right here is one of the toughest obstacles on the old coach road. And as you can see, things are starting to get hectic. Oh, Woo. old coach road, mate. It's a doozy. This is probably one of the toughest challenges on this particular track. It is, yeah. It's just been rock step after rock step after rock step, and here we are. <laughs> and um, yeah, it tells a tale. I found a shaft right here, and it looks like twisted. Very twisted and broken. Have you got that winch ready? I think so, mate. I'm going to give it a red hot go up through here, and we're just going to take it slowly. I'm a bit concerned about my old uh, tail shaft on this rock here, but ain't no other way to the top. This is forward of action. We ain't turning around going back, so I'm going to go and buckle up, mate. You boys stand up here and get ready, in, just in case I've got a winch. Just Absolutely, in case. Absolutely, mate. Look, let's do that. And to see what happens on this amazing trip, the old coach road like you've never seen it before. Better get back to the beginning and see it all started. For us, though. Up let's we keep get, going. Up we get. Do you want your shaft back? Yeah, I do, mate. Yeah, thanks. Our journey begins on some flat out gravel roads with views to die for. However, the dust is being kicked up and this is what far north Queensland at this time of year is synonymous for. Sean, are you going to come back there and all that dust, mate? I do, mate. I, I can hear you, but I can't see you. That's the start of the old coach road for you, mate. She's a, uh, about 50 k's a run on this dirt road before you get into the tough stuff. It's actually slated as one of the toughest tracks in the Cape, the old coach road. Yeah, I can attest to that, mate. I um, I broke two vehicles last time I tried to do the old uh, coach. And you didn't do the big rock step at the top, too, so you're in for a bit of a treat, mate. Look, this thing is beautiful campsites, plenty of wood out here for fires at night. It's steeped in history, there's lots of good views. I'm actually a bit of a fan, mate. I'm keen to come back here and uh, get even with this track. Anthony, can't see you either, mate. How are you doing back there? Old coach road, another one off the list for me. I'm, I'm pretty excited. It's one of those tracks that I think is going to be well suited to a camper trailer. There's a lot of Steep ins and outs out of washouts and gullies. You're really going to test you out, I think. Yeah, perfect, mate. Bring it on. Sambo, something tells me you're just going to find this a walk in the park, mate. Ah, uh, mate, yeah, that might be the case. It might not. I, either way, I'm super pumped to be here. One tip I've got for everyone is keep an eye on their feet when you're walking because a lot of gold still comes out of them, their hills. Right, mate, let's eat up this first bit of uh, dustiness and then we'll get into it, eh? It's not long until the dry, dusty roads give way to one of the most famous rivers in the region. That being the Palmer River. And of course, we've got to get across it. First though, it's time for us to drop some pressures. Tracks like these up in far north Queensland are perfectly suited to the D-Max. With its low centre of gravity, its wide stance and that reliable engine, I'm going to cruise through this track with zero issues. Right behind me, old mate Shauno and Sooty, well, they're going to love this track. And of course, we've got Anthony doing a bit of product testing with the Opus camper trailer. And up the back of the convoy, we've got Sam from Spares Box with that weapon of an 80. Righto, boys, tyres are ready. Let's get into it. Sean, I a bit more water in the palm of the last time, mate. Yeah, absolutely, mate. It almost reminds me of a little bit of a Pentecost sort of thing to it, like the Kimberley. Doesn't adjust. If there was a huge mountain range in the background, it would be. Look at the colour of that water, too. Ooh, such a harsh terrain around here, mate. Everything's dusty, rocky. It's a little oasis right through the middle of it. Thing is though, from here, this is where the old coach road really starts to get a bit interesting, mate. Yeah, it's sort of the official start, isn't it? Once you cross the Palmer, we're into it, boys. So Sammy, lock your hubs. Anthony, close all the doors on the camper trailer, mate. From memory, mate, there's gonna be enough, enough dust on this uh, track to really test all those um, little cupboards and stuff you've got there. But don't you worry, you worry about those old Toyota seals, I've got this. The old coach road was literally carved out of the hillsides. And this section right here, just goes to show what the old timers had to deal with. For us, it's still gonna be something of a challenge. Right, we've come across a little stagecoach route through here. Ease me way up into here and just have a little play at it and see how it's gonna feel. <laughs> it goes without saying that I've placed the D-Max into manual mode here first gear so that I'm nice and low and I'm just feathering the throttle so that I'm not getting wheel spin. I certainly don't want to be losing traction on these rocks because that is how you break things. Done well. Like a boss. One last little pinch and I'm done. Perfect line in my opinion, he's uh, straddled that rut, got the tyres on the high side and it's perfect example when you're taking lower hung vehicles on these sort of tracks to so sort of straddle those ruts and just throttle that through with the auto. Now it's my turn. Now I'm going to make it look hard. Watch this. Here we go, little rock step. Just going to 
jump up here. And up we go. Look at that, it's just been like tunnelled out between the rocks. This is a cool little track. This one looks a little bit more sinister, but should be okay. Shono is making this look easy. He's got one tiny little rock step to go. Oh, no. Nah. Struth, mate, turn the key again. You'll be right. Don't stall. Don't stall. My starter motor doesn't work. This makes it very challenging. Oh, no. I think he's crashed. Do you want to, um... Yeah. Yep. <laughs> there we go. He's found a good stick. This is going to, um, hopefully, he's going to hit the side of the starter motor. This is a good little tip. If your starter motor's playing up on its way out, you can sort of get a little bit more life out of it if you can just sort of knock it. And you, usually what's happening is those um, contacts start to make contact as you try and key it. Really just gently. You'd be used to bashing on our chunks, wouldn't you, mate? Well, that didn't work. You've always got to have a plan B. For us, that means using a bit of muscle. We're going to try and clutch start the old girl. It's a little party trick I like to do is make the boys work for it. You can't give them everything straight up. That's the key. Old cars, eh? <laughs> yeah. We're back. There we go. Once Sooty's started, she makes it up and she makes it look easy. <laughs> Gotta love old vehicles, eh? Okay, Anthony, you wanted product testing. You've got it. That's it, mate. You're into it. Trailer to go. Straight up there. Now it'll look like missing. Unbelievable. Send it. He's got this. Oh. <laughs> He's stuck. He's stoked, that's a big drive for a trailer. <laughs> Holy yeah, it can bounce off the wall so hard. You can actually <laughs> see where it's just done a bit of graffiti on the side of the <laughs> sandstone. That's all right, now he's got one more bit. And just like an obedient dog, the Opus camper trailer follows Anthony up the rock ledge yeah. and they're done. Woohoo! Righto, Sam boy. You are up, sir. No winches have been out yet, but there's always a first time for everything. So, let's see how we go here, folks. Too darn easy. Sambo, do you even realise there's rock steps in front of you, mate? <laughs> Just like driving down a highway, and he's done it with ease. The old coach road is steeped in history, and it's all centred around this spot right here, the old Maytown ruins. Well, here we go. I've been looking forward to this trip for quite some time. The old coach road is one of my favourite tracks in the Cape. A lot of history up here, and the name, well, pretty self-explanatory. The old coach road used to take coaches down at Cobb & Co. They had a base out of here, and they also had a, a route back and forth through here from about 1880 onwards. Now, what's it all about though? The history of this area? Well, gold mining, you know that. The Palmer River region, which we just crossed the Palmer. These valleys through here, back in the 1870s, 1880s, 20,000 people were crawling through here looking for gold. The only port that could bring supplies in, take supplies out, take gold out, bring men in, take men away, was Cooktown. The only way to get from Cooktown out to Maytown, onto Laura, and the gold fields out through here, was a road called the Old Coach Road. Can you imagine how hard it would have been back in the day to push horse and cart, wheelbarrows, just a swag on your back, and to make it from Cooktown out to here and then further into the gold fields? It's hard enough today in a modern four wheel drive. It was definitely a different time altogether. And to look around here today, it's almost impossible to believe just how much would have been going on. There were bakeries, there were boot shops, there were several general stores, there were dozens of pubs. This place would have literally been the hustle and bustle of the goldfields. If I could step back in time, it's places like this 
that I would genuinely love to come back to. But of course, Maytown disappeared just as quickly as it sprung up. And looking at it today, you've really got to use a bit of imagination to see it as it would have been back in the 1870s. These valleys, all the valleys through here, through the Palmer region, the richest gold fields in Queensland, 20,000 people, believe it or not. 20,000 back then, that's a significant portion of the Queensland population. All here looking for a little piece of metal. That's amazing. Heaps of Chinese They country. all came across for the gold rush. And that's done. what they did, yep, yep. They, they actually were the majority at Maytown. Yeah. And they would have had a lot of restaurants out here too. Many, many restaurants. Gives me a couple of ideas, mate. Does it? Yeah, Asian what? restaurants. You're looking, at, you're looking at a mobile restaurant right here, and I can do a little bit of Asian infusion. All right, well, I'd... Bit of an inspired uh, gold rush. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. You're leave, just going to put dust in the meal, aren't you? Leave it with you. <laughs> leave it with me, and uh, let's just think. Oh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. All right, well, I might go have a pick around the ruins, and then we'll get going. What do you say? I think so, mate. Yeah. I just want to go check out all this stuff. It's really cool. Let's go have a look. After picking through what's left of the Maytown ruins, we've got to make a mile, so it's back behind the wheel. The beauty of tracks like the Old Coach Road is you don't have to wait long before you're up upon another challenge. And this one right here, well, it's an absolute doozy. Classic little Cape York jump up here. We've got all rutted out, wet season taking its toll down here, and there's all like different lines everywhere, depending on the vehicle you got. Um, I'll just be struggling to find the right line for any vehicle, really, because there's just washouts everywhere, big rock steps. That's the hard bit. It should be smooth sailing once it gets up past here, but. It's gonna to wanna to pick an inch perfect line, I reckon. Come on up, mate. Okay, I'm not overly sure what line I'm gonna take here. I'm sort of just, well, I'm gonna poke my wheels at it and hope for the best. Sort of just going by feel here. Got it, though. Oh, makes it look easy. Hey, what hill? Well, he made that look a lot easier than I suspected. I, you get a load of that, some of these ruts here, and we've got, we were talking about rock steps had a nearly as high as your sort of waist, but just the way you put the tyres really dictated that drive. And um, I'm going to follow the same line as the old D-Max, I think. Nice and easy. And um, just try and straddle, bang, straight up the top. <laughs> that was funny. Righto, bring the trailer up, see how that goes. The old coach road is tough on trucks, let alone trailers. But the Opus is as tough as an old pair of boots. And Anthony, well, he's keen to put it through its paces. Sam's built this rig specifically for tough tracks, and it really shows. That's a good drive, mate. With the sun doing what the sun does, it's time for us to look for a campsite. Luckily for us, we've stumbled on a beautiful spot on a magic stretch of the river. Ooh. I reckon you wouldn't want to be coming through in the wet season, boys. Yeah, I reckon this would be underwater, mate and beside the Palmer River, what do you think, in camp? Well, that sun's getting lower by the minute, mate, and I'm getting thirstier by the second. Let's just be honest, mate, you're um, pretty keen to see what I whip up in the old uh, camp kitchen tonight. Well, you promised me something great. You uh, you said you're going to do a bit of something Asian-themed, I don't know, so I'm, I'm keen to see you work your magic, mate. <laughs> oh, mate, this one, uh, you'll remember this for the ages. If you're going to do what I've got a sneaking suspicion you're going to do, you could be my favourite person at camp tonight. Well, you'll have to wait and find out. All right, all right, we'll do that. Well, let's get across here. Rivers usually mean campsites, in my opinion. A nice little flat bit of grass or something would be beautiful. Have a go at this. Shano, did you ask for a grassy site? <laughs> no way, mate. It's probably the only patch of grass on the um, old coach road. <laughs> I think you'd be right. It's spectacular, and then there's, then there's this. This is pretty darn good. Yeah, this will do. This will do. At this time of day, well, it's every man for himself. Campers are going up, stretches are being laid out, awnings are being undone, and swags are being set up.
It's time to crack a beer, get a fire going, and watch day turn into evening. This right here is my favourite part of the entire process. Well, we're down on the old coach road, and this is a very famous track for many reasons. Four wheel drives are known as one of the toughest tracks in Cape York. There's heaps of four wheel drive challenges. A lot of historians will know this place is where the gold rush kicked off essentially in Cape York. It was a melting pot for all different races. A lot of Chinese came through here, and tonight I want to try and cook up a little bit of Cape York Chinese infused fried rice. Now, it's going to be all time to be honest with you because I'm really excited about this one. I've um, got a bunch of flavours that are going to make this work really well. I've got a Stack of things in the old Dometic that are gonna make this sing. Do you need a beer? Yeah, thanks, mate. Oh. <laughs> first things what we want to do is we want to get this going. We're gonna cut an onion up. We're gonna do the rice first because part of the fried rice is, oh. is rice. Fried you, rice. That's right, My mate. That's favorite. Right. You know, one of the things I'm excited about is we've got all the modern technology Whoa. at our disposal. We've got a Dometic fridge, so we've got all sorts of cool ingredients. So technically, our fried rice should be better than the Chinese that were back in these. Huge call. Cool. It's a big call. Huge call. Cool, it's an absolutely massive call. Cool. Goodness to, gracious. To be honest, they, they probably had it sussed. First things first, mate, chuck a little bit of the old olive oil straight in, bang. Nice, nice, nice. So, nice. Give me a stirring if you want. Normally, normally when you're cooking rice, a lot of people just chuck the old rice straight on with the water and all the rest of it. We're getting there, but first things first, I'll show you how to make the best rice you've ever had in your life. Get some onion. Done. Tiny bit of garlic. Now, you probably want about two, shy. two shakes. Now, while that's happening, got the old sun rice, the old Australian yep. rice. Got a few boys to feed, so it, that's, that's a full cup there. <laughs> oh, let's just go, let's go two, because we can eat this for lunch yeah, tomorrow. It'll be go really nuts. good. Go nuts. A little bit more olive oil over Settle the top there. Down, Buzz, chef. There we go. Yeah. And so what we're actually doing is we're actually putting the rice straight on the flames. Now, Whoa, don't so worry. You, you basically want to do that until the rice goes a little bit translucent with the is that old. See through? Sort of see through, but not quite <laughs> translucent, right? right and, and then, then you want to add the water. Okay. So my typical rule when you're working with rice. Oh, the onions. However many cups of rice you put in, double the amount of water. Oh. So we did uh, two, yep. cu two cups of rice. So I'm basically, look at that. Are you going to measure it or just go by feel, chef? Be by feel. Yeah, okay. By feel. Nice. So that might be too much, but <laughs> we'll see. The, the cool thing about rice, you always add more rice, right? That's actually, well, that's not how it works. That's not damper. how it works that's at all. That's, yep, yep, that's flour. I didn't actually tell you, but I am out of my depth here. I mean, you put a lot of water in. <laughs> yeah, it's a fair bit. Just get some out. <laughs> There we go. I'm taking that much out. Yep, yep. <laughs> it's all about feel, so. It really is. I'm feeling that it's about right. You liking that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, what I'm thinking now. Yep. Get that on the go. When that starts to boil a little bit, we're gonna actually turn the heat right down, simmer it. 15 minutes, rice will be fluffy, super good. Now's the time we get all the ingredients out. This is the okay. main bit of the fried rice, so I've got yep. some, I've got some ingredients in here, mate. Authentic? Yeah, look, watch this, watch this, watch this. We've got these ones. Of course we do. Green onions. Uh, we've got those. Yeah, we've got um, preserved eggs, vacuum packed. Got obviously some bacon. That's the way, got mate. The That's the way. That's the way. What else you got in there? Peas, peas obviously. Of course you need peas. And mate, probably one of the main ingredients. Yep. The old uh, pig's balls. Old pig's pig. balls. You gotta have those. And hang on, yep. hang on. Got some massive sausages here. They are good size. Gee whiz. Look at them. You couldn't have one without it. Oh, you've got to have a fried egg. And you've got some eggs in there as well. You've got to have a fried egg. So, folks, we, we went a little bit wild at the old Asian <laughs> supermarket. Yeah, and these, um, these ones just say pork balls, so <laughs> had to get them. <laughs> um, what have you got there? Mate, I've got eggs that have been preserved and vacuum packed. I don't know how this is going to work out. Well, I don't even... Well, I think that's a bit of an entree, to be honest with you. I, I think like, it is, mate. I, Open those up. reading the history books and um, the old preserved... Ooh. They're supposed to be that... <laughs> preserved egg. They come individually wrapped. Hey boys, four eggs, four <laughs> fellas here. Um, All right. That's you sure you don't have to cook these? No, it's, it's a little entree, just trying to get into the whole... Uh, Why is it green? Get him straight out oh, of there. I'm not sure, mate, but we're going to have a go at so it. So it's pretty easy to eat these. Um, oh, you go first. I've never eaten one before. Like like a hard-boiled egg, you just... Is get, it? Get right in there. Oh my oh, goodness, my look goodness. at the, the colour of that. Look Open that. I wish I could say I wasn't terrified. Oh, Ooh, I'm... smells good. These last in the full dry for a bit. 2020. There you go. Are they safe for human consumption? Apparently. Well, I'll let you know in a second, boys. I'm going to have a cut into so, that and have a go. Yeah, cut into it? No, you just get straight in. Oh. How is it? <laughs> it doesn't look stoked. 
Is it right? <laughs> Easy words. Pretty good. Ooh, what it lacks in taste. Really, really makes me put it all in there, mate. It's actually not that bad. It's not bad at it's all. Not that bad, it's lovely. You know what you could say? It's just got that touch. You really want to wash it down, though. That is disgusting. That was nice. It's, that is so good. You can really taste. Think, you can really taste the bit where they preserved it. Nice. Mm. It's good, isn't it? Ooh. Finish yeah, that off there, mate. It turns out you don't need to put that in the fried rice. That's uh, yeah. more of an hors d'oeuvre than anything. Yeah. Well, I'm a piece of mine by the fire. Yeah, so will I. That's a good idea. Yeah. So, mate, what I want to do now? Let's get the old uh, pigs' balls out. Yep. So pork balls. Yep. They're fantastic bits of kit. You just want to put put them aside. I've got them all out. These are the Chinese sausages. Pretty much no rules when it comes, oh, there is a heck of a lot of rules when it comes to fried rice, as I'll <laughs> soon find out. <laughs> I'm basically going to cut those sausages up in small little pieces. These are one of these things that don't keep in the bush very well unless you've got a good fridge. So, how long have you had those now? Three, two days? Four days, probably. Four days. Four days. What I like to do when it comes to um, shallots, a lot of people like to cut them finely, not me. Just um, cut them about that much. Yeah. Mate, they, this is done, I reckon. That rice is good, all right. Do you want to test it, chef? Yeah, give us a little... Have a go there. I always get a pinch of rice. And that's it, and put in your gob. Give me the word. That'll do. Done. That'll do. Get him off the boiler. Yep. Now I'm going to chuck the lid on yep. and um, get that heat cranking. Yep. Now what we basically do is fry the ingredients. I'm going to go outer ring as well, mate. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, you like that? Mm -hmm. First things first, I'm going to chuck the bacon in. We've got uh, <laughs> diced bacon. Yes. All the bacon in there. Yes. We're going to do prawns, obviously. Of course we are. So these are just banana prawns. Yep. I'm basically going to whack them in it, okay? Now these ones here are the, um, the Loop Chong Chinese style sausages. You've got to put them in a, in a fried rice, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. I only learned about them the other day, but they're a big part of what yep. I'm doing. Get them in there in the heat. That's it. That's it. Now yeah, what comes after the old uh, Chinese sausage? Of course the balls uh, do. You've got to put, put balls a, in. There's a pork balls. Um, yep. Basically little flavour enhancers. So get a good couple of handfuls of balls in you. In your, in your fried rice. We want those prawns, they're going to go nice and pink. The balls should go what colour, mate? Um, not sure yet, but probably brown. Probably brown. Okay, okay. Th these All are right. like the stalks of the old shallots. Yep. Give a bit of colour too. Whack them, Whack them in. Look at that. If you can't do a fried rice without peas, whack a few peas in. Now, a bit of veg. I always say there's no rules to like cooking. There is no rules. There isn't. Whatever you feel like on the day. Yep. This this is a bunch of frozen veg, so we've got about two handfuls of that. Did you wash your hands? Uh, yeah. Oh, I actually fine. chuck them back in the Dometic because I'll keep, I'll, I'll use them. We'll use those later, I'll yeah, use them for sure. Later. Yep. Okay, sesame oil, you can yes. you don't need too much of this stuff, to be honest with you. It's quite flavoursome. Yeah, you just a little bit of that around the around the sides. A little bit of soy sauce. We can add more later, we'll see what that goes. And uh, oyster sauce, oyster sauce, yeah. Look, if you want to make anything that's uh, a few Asian flavours, you get yourself a bit of sesame oil and some oyster sauce, a bit of soy, cannot go wrong. You what? can you can go wrong. You can, but <laughs> but it will give it a beautiful flavour. Well, I can already smell it. Geez, you're going heavy on that, yeah, I know, chef. I know, I know. We need to get that amongst it. Once yep. it starts to boil off, first rule of baking, make a well. Make a big well. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Push it all out. Yep. All right. Making an omelette in the middle there. Settle down, chef. So, all we need to do here, yep. create a bit of space. Yep. Put them straight in, straight in. Stir them a bit? Yeah, that's it, exactly right. That looks like something I've never seen before. You but do that. So yep. what, I'm, what I'm doing here, I'm, I'm getting the next bit going. Get the old uh, shallots, and I'm going to cut them up. That's looking like egg in the middle of a uh, stir fry. That's is looking it? good. Yep. Is it? No, nah, it's good. It's going to make a bit of an omelette slash not ah. really an omelette. That's looking pretty good. I like it. How, how are we going there? Go welder's fingers. Welder's fingers, let's go. You're going to scoop. Go, go, go. You're going to scoop. Ah, it's really hot. Yeah. Ah. Oh, oh, that's hot. We've got balls all over the table. Yeah, it's not the first time. There we go. <laughs> all right. Will you look at that? All right, mix that through. Mix that through. Damn, boy. I put a bit of oyster sauce beforehand. Um, I'm going a little bit more now. I put a fair bit in there. To that's be good. That's good. That's good. You want a flavour infusion. A tiny bit of soy. If you haven't got a strong right wrist, all right, I would so, suggest you don't so do this. I've just chopped the rest of these um, shallots up. Yep. I'm going to sprinkle them from my height. Get the big bits out. Yep. Put that ball back in. Yeah, always. That. Well, that doesn't look like rice, but if you tip that over that way. Look at that. That is a proper fried right, rice. Are we get the boys up with some bowls? I reckon and so. And just get stuck into it's this. It's not going to be long now. It's... <laughs> you got to get them in like kettle, right. mate. Chef always goes first. That's a, that's a <laughs> rule of cooking school. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, look at you coming hot. Oh, look at that. That that's is it. That is some that's good. It. Oh, God. Holy ball right on the top. <laughs> Chef, that is unlike any fried rice I've ever had. Really? Yep, unlike <laughs> any. <laughs> is it good? <laughs> 
really nice. The prawns, the whole yep. flavors are really doing well here. And look, it's not a hard meal to cook. You just chuck what you got in the old Dometic with a bit of rice, and you got yourself a fried rice, simple as that. It really is. And um, I think I've got, going to prove the fact that anyone can make a fried rice. Well, if we can. Just That's nice, though. go easy on the eggs, folks, because mm. they are not for beginners. You, you got you got flavours like that coming out of the, of the old fried rice on the old coach road in Cape York. My opinion doesn't get much better than that. So I reckon we get around a few of these, mm. sit down around the fire, and um, how good is this? Mate. Mm. Those balls are good, aren't they? They really are good. Mm. It's first light on one of the better campsites on the old coach road. How good is Australia and how good is owning a four-wheel drive? We are so lucky to be able to wake up in places like this. Well, first thing this morning, sun has just poked over the horizon and all I've got around me, you can hear it, is birdsong. Now, if we go back to, well, let's go back to 1877 when the first, the first people were plying their trade along the old coach road here. Would have been 20 odd thousand people milling around through here. <laughs> I guarantee you, it would not have sounded like this at all. What is astounding to me, of course, is that this part of the world, with so many people in it, not that long ago, 140, 130 years ago, and there's no remains today except for a few stumps in the ground, the old little bit of tin on the ground. Everything else is gone. One thing that hasn't gone completely, though. And I keep my eye pretty firmly focused on the ground while I'm out here because there is still a heck of a lot of gold out here. You just never know, people find it all the time. So, if you see me scratching around in the next couple of days, you'll know why. campsite like this on the banks of the Palmer River, well, you could easily spend a week out here. And that week would be even better with a setup like the Opus Camper. It makes camping luxurious when you're out in the rough stuff. Spending weeks at a time out here means you've really got to be comfortable. It's worth spending a bit of time thinking about your setup and coming across one that works for you. Tell you what, would you have a go at that for a setup? I'm in the Adventure Kings Tour rooftop tent. Now, I've been using that for a bit over six months. Absolutely love it. I love how quick it is to set up and also pack down. Another cool thing, being in Cape York, you've got to be a little bit crocodile conscious. Now, we're beside the Palmer River. There's absolutely no crocodiles in there, maybe a few freshies, but nothing you need to be worried about. But if anything, it's good peace of mind because there are some campsites up in the Cape where you're going to be close to salt water. And when I'm up there, I'm absolutely crock free. It goes without saying that it's very comfortable up there. It's my little home away from home. The other really cool thing, it's easy to pack away, which is exactly what I'm gonna do now, because today, well, we've got a huge day in store on the old coach road, and I love it up here, so let's get into it. With breakfast done, coffee had, and camp packed up, it's time for us to get back on the old coach road. This offshoot of the old Palmer River here is completely inaccessible during the wet season, and it caught many, many miners out back in the day who were trapped out here through the entire wet. Now, can you imagine that? Back on the track, and we are into one of the many rocky hill climbs on the old coach road. This is very typically old coach road, Shawno, bumpy. Rocky, dusty. Yeah, a few diff clangers chucked in there, mate. It's um, <laughs> a few rocks on this track. Oh, there's one. Might be the understatement of the year. Very rocky, very dusty, but a super cool track. Probably one of the most fun off-road tracks in Cape York. Cheers, yeah, bumpy boys. Really putting that uh, suspension to the test in the old camper trailer. Yeah, I was just thinking that, mate. You wouldn't want to come here with average suspension, that's for sure. Tongue has just come out for a second. It's getting serious. Okay. Found, found one of those rocks. Gnarly. That's cool. That's cool. Love this kind of stuff. A lot of history still remains on the old coach road, and ruins like this one right here paint a picture of days gone by. 1870s, mate. They bought all this stuff out from Cooktown by horse and cart. That's amazing. This is here. Where's mine? These are batteries. Oh, I guess the, the battery that would have powered the whole town or something back then. The, the battery, day. yeah, it would have been lithium back then. It would have been AGM, well, I would say, or lead acid. Lead acid, I'd say. Yeah. Lead acid. <laughs> but either way, it came out by horse and cart in small pieces from Cooktown. This is just one part. There's pieces everywhere. There's pieces down the back there. It's uh, 
yeah, step back in time. Be good to come back in here and somehow put your VR goggles on and just watch everyone walking around. That's another world, mate. They did a lot tougher than us. A lot tougher. A lot, a lot tougher. tougher. So they yep. actually would have used this to break the quartz down. That's right, yep. And then would have been another part of the process that yeah. get some gold out of it and there's a little steam, steam engine over there, there. there's mine shafts down the back there. Yep. This place is just littered with history. These ruins here signify what would be the beginning of the end of the old Palmer River gold rush. Here they're starting to crush and grind up the rocks from deep within the earth. You see they found all the alluvial gold so now it's time to dig to work for your money. As we start to leave the Maytown area the track proper starts to begin. This is where you really do start to find some of the bigger, more technical obstacles on the old coach road. Look at that view. I think that the early pioneers used to take this track from Maytown up to Laura. It would have been horseback, maybe by bullock or even by foot. It would have been really hard going. So tough, it's hard enough in a four wheel drive with all today's technology. So imagine back then, you know, they're really tough back in those days. Holy heck. And talking about tough, the track has just claimed a tyre on the Opus camper. These things happen and it's to be expected. But the beauty of the Opus is that it comes fully equipped with everything you need to change a tyre quickly and easily. Ten minutes later and we're back into it. This really is a typical section of the old coach road. Shaley rocks, it's steep and it's really quite bouncy. You've got to have everything in line and working on your truck to make it through here in comfort and without any breakages. That said, I rate the Old Coach Road as one of the most fun tracks in far north Queensland. And I guarantee you the boys would agree. Often people ask us if they should run mud terrains or all terrains for their big Cape York trip. I've decided to give the new Yokohama Geolander Extreme All-Terrain G16s a go because it's an aggressive all-terrain with the strength of a mud terrain tyre. So what does that mean? Well it means I've got plenty of traction, I've got excellent puncture resistance for the long stretches on the PDR which are fraught with corrugations and it also means that they're excellent on the bitumen for the long drives from Sydney to the Cape for example and back again. That being said, we want to know what tyres you'd pick for your Cape York adventure. Mud terrain or all-terrain? Let us know in the comments below. Up ahead, we've got a short, steep pinch with a few different options. It really is a case of choose your own adventure. Have a look at this, will you? Nice. It's wild, mate. That wild. Is... Really rutted out. Heaps of rocks. Very Lots very of rough. dust. Ooh. Check this out. It's like a thick layer of bull dust. Traction's going to be an issue, and so are these big ruts here. Yep. So, oh, right. oh, let's give it a go. Get, Get into it. Happens. Get into it, mate. All right. All right, this is a hill of consequence. Here we go, boys. I've chosen to tackle the far right-hand line. It's dusty, it's bouncy, and it's probably the easiest line of the lot, but it's still a heck of a lot of fun. What a drive! <laughs> Dusty. <laughs> that was fun. Well, the beauty of where we are right now is it's a bit of a playground. There's a couple of different options here. I think Sean's going to have a tackle this one here. Bigger tyres, bigger lift. He should walk up this, but it's super slippery. So I'll send him up, see how he goes. I'll tell you what, that looks a lot bigger when you get up close to it, a lot steeper too. The rear locker on. I should just about do it, I reckon. I just made that. Anthony's decided to tackle the same line as me. Righto, mate. Give it the berries. Walk off. Let's see what happens. On hills like this, momentum is your friend. But it's a fine line. Too much, you'll do damage. Not enough, you're not going to make it. And it looks to me like Anthony's got this one spot on. Look at that. Woo. Gave that just about the everything getting up there and he probably needed to as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is that's a lot of dust. Whoop. There's about a foot of bull dust on this. There's not to mention there's a heck of a lot more in his vehicle. <laughs> a lot of bull dust coming out of that vehicle. Righto, oh, Sam. Heck. Let's see it. Look at that thing. It's an animal. Dust is not a lot of traction. And the holes are, well, 
There's some deep holes. Hopefully the big tyres, big lift, make life doable. It's got some lockers on. Good drive. How good. Crawled it. Let the car do the work. You. That is a good drive. It's just good lockers. Magic good buttons. And right? 80 series. Both pretty good things. <laughs> <laughs> well, mate, sensational drive, buddy. Thanks, mate. Look, as a fellow 80 series owner, I've got to say, this thing is set up absolutely for Cape York. It's ready for the tough tracks, also for the touring. Yep. Now, go through some of the favourite mods. You've been up here three weeks now in the Cape. What are the favourite mods you've done to this thing? Mate, the Cape's got a little bit of everything for, for really everybody. I mean, a couple of my favourites would, would have to be the awning. I mean, to be able to throw an awning out at night when, when rain's, you know, a potential is, you know, a godsend. We've got obviously good LED lights as well for driving on the PDR late at night. You've got to avoid the washouts and that kind of thing. Yep. You need good comms too, so UHF and aerials are a must. Yep. And then when you're up here and, you know, you, you're pushing through tracks that haven't been driven in 12 months, a winch, a good quality winch is, a, is an absolute essential too. I think a lot of people know that they can get all their parts that they need to maintain their vehicle, their spares from Spares Box, but a lot of people don't know you can actually do all the accessories as well, so you can be the one-stop shop for a Cape York trip. Exactly right, all your modifications and accessories to get your four-wheel drive Cape York ready, Spares Box has you covered. Beauty, mate. Sounds good. Well, there's more tracks just like this one up in front, so let's get into it, eh? Let's do it. And because you always ask for it, and with good reason, here's a look at just how the camera car tackled this challenge. It's not long before we come upon a section of track that really caused us some grief last time we were out here. After breaking the Dirty 30 and having it sent back to Cairns on a tow truck, Shauno was put in the camera car. On this particular section of climb, things did not go his way, and he ended up doing some pretty significant damage to the front end of the camera truck. This caused several hours of delay, and we were still fixing it into the night, in fact. And then Shono was in limp mode for the rest of the trip. Let's hope this time around things go completely differently. We've got us a fairly serious looking sort of a rock step here. We're going to second gear, manual mode on the auto and just try and pick my way up through here, try and pick the high spots I suppose. Plenty of traction in it though, so I'm just going to take it easy. Just try and walk up here, just like that. Oh, look at that view! <laughs> Old Coach Road, stunning. You gotta do it, you gotta do it. Put it on your bucket list. Here we go. This is a little challenging sort of rock step. Just again, real run it out. Heaps of big rocks and super dusty. Just gonna try and keep that throttle really constant when I'm coming up here. When you vary the speed of the throttle, that's when you start to spin tires, that's when you lose traction and um, ooh, a little bit steeper than you think. Up we go. That's right. Yeah, as easy as that. Anthony's up next in the trailer, and he's going to have his work cut out getting through this loose shaly rock. Still, I reckon he's picked a good steady pace and seems to be taking it all in his stride. That's a nice drive, mate. It's very dusty back there. You can probably tell I'm sweating. Now, whether that's from anticipation or the fact that it's 30 plus degrees outside, I'll leave that up to you guys to decide. But first low, I've got the locker compressor primed and ready just in case it gets a little bit airy, but it should be okay. Yeah, rock step. Scrambling for traction, it's so dusty. It's just 
inches and inches of ball dust, really fine dust, all over the trucks. It makes it really quite tricky. It's all right. The old girl's done it again. You. The day's getting on, but luckily for us, we stumbled upon a cracking little campsite just off to the right-hand side of the track. On the old coach road, clearings like this one here are kind of hard to come by. So it goes without saying, we're stoked to find this one. Mate, have a look at this. This is a tailor-made campsite in a place that's full of hills and rocks and gullies. Have a look at this, will you? Yeah, this is sensational, mate. This is a perfect little campsite. and Doesn't look like it's had a lot of traffic either. This will do, mate, this will do. With the late afternoon light being absolutely perfect, the camera guys wanted to get a little bit artsy. The instructions to us were, just keep having a beer and enjoy yourself. And well, who am I to argue with instructions like that? Cheers, folks. Anthony. Hello, mate. Three weeks up the cape, mate. We're just about drawing to a close. You would not get a tougher torture test than this, mate. Oh, that looks clean. And how's she all fed? Mate, better than the car, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> there's so much dust in that car. I can't believe how much dust is actually up here. Mate, there's a lot of dust up here. So you haven't got any dust in the places mate, you would expect to get it? Look, check this out. This yep. is the back cabinet. So you expect big whirlwind, dust yep. to go everywhere. You can see exactly where our seal was. Dust to the seal stops there. Bad. Kitchen's looking clean. Kitchen is looking clean. Same thing. Best thing with the Opus is, look, we use adjustable latches with all of our cabinetry, yep. and we use a double pinch seal as well. It really stops that dust getting in there. Yeah, that is impressive, mate, but how about breakages? Mate, most of them use error. But I, I broke <laughs> a drop down leg, yep. um, and I did a tyre. For three weeks in the Cape, I'm stoked. Mate, given the fact that you've done gun shoot, you've done the Frenchman's first up, you've done every corrugation between here and Cairns, I'm pretty impressed with that, mate. You haven't done any wheel bearings. There's no structural damage underneath. There's no dense cracks or breakages on the outside of the camper trailer. Mate, that's the best thing about our, our aluminium frame. Yep. Um, I've taken this everywhere. Sean's taken his 80. Yep. I, I'm stoked the way this thing's performed. Right, mate, I'll let you set this bad boy up because I know it only takes you about three minutes. Let me go and get a head start on my swag, for goodness sake. <laughs> See you in a second, mate. It's that time of day. Time to set up camp. Awnings are coming out, swags are being set up, and the fire will soon start crackling. Thanks to the air beam technology inside the Opus camper trailer, one push of a button and Anthony can literally walk away while the camper trailer sets itself up. How good is that? Not that it takes the rest of us that much longer either. And when a cold beer is the end goal, I reckon you work just that little bit faster. With the sun going down, the fire cracking and cold beers in hand, it's time to sit back and enjoy another Cape York Sunset. As night falls, Sam's put his hand up to cook and soon he's got a bit of a camp feast going on the barbie plate, which leaves time for the rest of us to enjoy this amazing camp. And I reckon it's my shout, lads. Starting to smell good, mate. Dude, I don't know what you're marinating that in, but yeah, it's... Yeah, good, having a night off cooking dinner, oh, mate. It's, it's, this, is, this, is, this is the thing, when you come up here with your mates at Cape York... Hey, folks, here's a trick. I'm going to give them a tip. What we do when we come up here is we've got we've got the guys that travel with us, everyone does one night's cooking. Mm. So you can, if you've got, if you're up here and you've got five lots of mates, everyone does a night. Seems like I do a fair bit more cooking than one night of cooking, but anyway. <laughs> Settle down, <Tiger. laughs> So the fact of the matter is, it's a little tip. Get all your mates to do one night's cooking, you can have all the other nights off. Mm. But Cape York, get up here early. That's my tip. Get I'm up gonna go here early. going to go straight in there. Yeah, look, it is a good time to come. We've come up really early, but you've got to be quite flexible when you come up this early in the season. I so, We're yeah. up in May yep. and, um, yeah, the temperature's perfect. Everything's really nice. You've got a lot yeah. of water in the creeks, which can sometimes be a bit of a hazard. On the French ones, we have to turn back. We didn't That's quite right. make it across the Pasco. Yeah. Um, you know, and look, to be honest, a lot of four-wheel drivers wouldn't have gone through the telly at that time of year because the no, water was the water up, is super high. up high. It is high, it is high. If you've never done big water crossings before, and the Cape is not a hard place to four-wheel drive. It's not. But the water crossings are big. It's not the place to learn them. It really isn't. So if you've never done a bonnet high water crossing before, I would suggest Nolans is not the place to learn. To learn to start it's, off it's your, your water crossing career. Yeah. A lot of people do, and they probably Pay see the about sometimes. 45 to 50 vehicles a year written off just in Nolans alone. And because it ain't worth it. Exactly right. It's not, not it's worth not it. Worth you're it. up here for holidays. Exactly. You've got three weeks ahead of you. It's not the time or place to break your vehicle. Not to mention it's very expensive. Totally expensive. Now, we're talking about early season here, folks, but at the same time, you and I prefer to get out in the middle of nowhere, no one else around, but there are people that do enjoy having, you know, the comfort of others. Yeah, absolutely. Especially if you've got kids. Absolutely. If you've got kids, and you get can, them together. And you can meet other campers as well, yep. like-minded yep. people, and this is the perfect place to do that. So what, June, July? I would say June, July. Absolutely. Perfect, mate. Late June, July. Yep. 
Weather's better. It's a little cooler. The nights here can be a little bit, you know, the days are pretty hot. Yeah. Uh, the water's gone down a lot, so you are taking the average four-wheel drive through. You don't have to be so worried about that. And if you've got kids, the tin lids, mate. Oh, they'll be running around you, meeting other kids. Down trees, they're going everywhere yeah, out absolutely. here. Absolutely. So if you do like that, June, July. Now, yeah. can I just go a little bit negative for just a second, just one second, and talk about late season and crowds. And mm. just some camping etiquette if I could. There are a few problems that comes with the crowds. We've already seen it. We're early in the season, we're seeing it now. So imagine later in like August. What are you talking, mate? I'm talking about people pooing in the bush that don't know what they're doing. They're just lazy. They're just lazy. They're not even pooing in the bush. It's, it's ruining the tracks for all of us, to they're be honest. The it's... We've seen toilet paper strung all over the coach road, and we've got to say something. We've got to say Look, something. Look, it's all over the coach road. It's a little bit of a teletrack. It's, it's, it's not just the Cape, it's all over Australia. Guys, listen. I'm going to go through it for you. I'm going to do it really simply. It's if you've got a driver's license and you can and, you, and you've got some cognitive things going upstairs, grab yourself a shovel, a pair, and some and some toilet roll. You don't even need to take that. I don't care. But grab yourself a shovel, dig a hole, do whatever you need to do, and then put it back in the, and put the dirt back on top and <laughs> tap it down with the shovel and give yourself a big old high five because you've just done the right thing. But don't just walk 10 meters from camp. That's and, what people are doing. And. Can I say crap? Yeah, absolutely. Well, That's what and, they're doing. And crap on the ground and leave it there because we're seeing it. We we roll up to a campsite today. We didn't film it, but we came through. Uh, the fire was still going. Yep. There was rubbish. There was cans all through yep. the fire. Yep. And there was probably, I wasn't, you know, counting, but I could just see there was five bits of toilet paper yeah, yeah. in all different directions around the camp. You know, that's just disgusting behaviour. It's, it's not on. That's going to get tracks closed. And when I come to that rubbish, guys, take your rubbish. It's just get a rubbish bag. I use the big garden bags, the big, uh, the big standalone rubbish bags, the big plastic ones. Yep. I carry yep. it in the back of the DMAX. I've got all the rubbish in the back of there. It's so easy to do. If you can bring it in, you can you bring can it, it out. out. It's you simple. It and out. in fact, what's even better, if you can just pick up even a little bit that wasn't yours, yep. you are responsible for keeping tracks open. You really are. You're, you're like a lifesaver. You're like a hero. Now, listen, that's a bit negative, but the positives are this is the cape. And what How a place to be, mate. I, How good is it? I love coming up here every year. We, yep. we, we love this place yeah, and we, we want to just make sure it keeps open. I think that's why we're saying this. I don't want to see the Cape ever closed down. Or, or restricted. They'll restricted. Do, they'll start cutting yeah. some of the side tracks on it. As you know, yep. that's why you come up here to go and explore. The side tracks, exactly right, mate. But the only thing you need is time off work, put some fuel in that bad boy, and get up here and enjoy the absolute best of the Cape and bring mates with you like Sammy over here who is about to put some dirty old steaks on that barbecue and feed us. I'm gonna sit back. Because we're gonna sit back and have a quiet brewski. I'm gonna help myself to another beer out of your fridge and tonight is gonna be a good night. You can do, you can do, you've got plenty in there. There is a little one. I wanna actually throw to you guys and um, I would like you guys to comment down below yep. about any tips you might have for Cape York. Because there's going to be a lot of people watching this, and um, if you go through the comments, you're going to see a lot of people giving advice yep. of their best tips, maybe their best tracks, their best campsite, yep. what time yep. of year, what to bring, what not to bring, yep. how to modify your vehicle. There's a lot. Get involved in the comments below, because I want to go through and have a good look. We, we and, both um, do, yep. Next yep. year, mate, we might even get some ideas from the comments. Well, I've got one. i got one. Bring a mate that can't fish as well as you. <laughs> I do that all the time. <laughs> <laughs>
morning ritual. I sort of check over the vehicle, and in particular, have a go at this air filter. I've been um, seconding the convoy and um, picking up a heck of a lot of dust on the old coach road. So this morning, I'm just gonna blow that dust out. It's not too bad. A lot of people wanna tap these things. It's not the right way to really clean an air filter. The right way is to get air and push against the way that the particles will come into the filter. So the filter that'll come in through the snorkel and go up through the filter that way, you wanna blow air this way through push all the, those particles back out and um, that way the big girl will breathe easy. Now, of course it helps in the first place to get yourself a good quality filter. This one here is a um, Wix filter by Man & Hummel. I found these ones really good, but even still you want to clean them um, ideally every day. If you can get into that sort of routine, um, your diesel engine will absolutely love you for it. Now, another thing that I check religiously every single day is my 12 volt system. I need to know how much my auxiliary batteries have still got left in them. It's really easy with the Manager 30. I'm gonna just go and have a look and look at that 12.8 volts in my two batteries. Now that's after a full night of using camp lights. The fridge has been going of course all night. In fact, two fridges have been going all night. And today actually marks three weeks of being out in the bush in Cape York and um, it has not let me down. Now, one of the main reasons is that Manager 30 pumps a lot of charge back into these batteries. Every time the vehicle's turned on, 30 amps is going straight into here to charge these up. So with a little bit of driving each day, these batteries are in tip top condition and um, I know that I've got confidence in my 12 volt system to run the fridge all night, but also my camp lights as well. Another really cool thing is that I can easily monitor what's going on with my whole system via this little screen here. So if I do see the charge low, which hasn't happened this trip yet, I can easily just grab the solar blanket out, put that up, get a few hours of charge when I get into camp and I know that everything is gonna be perfect. With everything in tip top shape, it's now time for us to hit perhaps the most challenging section of the old coach road. Mate, as bumpy as it might feel right now driving down this track, can you imagine doing this horse and cart, mate, with uh, no suspension, nothing? Mate, to be honest, I can't. It's such a rough track with all the modern technology and the good gear we've got. Doing it by horse and cart must have been some sort of mission, mate. Just can't fathom it. And, it. and it came all the way from Cooktown. I mean, you know, we're only doing a small fraction of it here, but uh, to come in from Cooktown carrying everything you needed to come out here and try and make a go of it in the gold fields, most likely you don't even know what's going on out here. You've probably never even seen gold, but you've heard that you can make a fortune. Jeepers creepers, mate. Yeah, different breed of men back then, mate. That's, uh, that's all time. Where we're going now, mate, this is a uh, part of the old route itself going up onto the tablelands up here, and there's a big rock step we've got to get up to get up there, but quite a few ruins when we do. That's cool, mate. I'm really excited about this part of the trip. Haven't yet done it, even though I've done the coach road before. Um, a few mechanical uh, embarrassments um, didn't see me get up there. We'll leave that alone for now, mate. We'll just keep going on this track and hope we don't repeat the past. Right, let's get into it, eh? This is a rocky, steep section. Pick some good lines through here, I think. Beauty with it is, I think, I think there's plenty of traction through here because it's rock, but there's a lot of small stuff on top, shaley kind of stuff, so. And it's real diff bangers too. Oh, pick a line. see right here is the drop off on the left hand side. Picking a line is vital. Oh, Jesus creepers. That was pretty epic. Shawno's up next and something tells me he's just going to muscle his way straight up the centre. There we go, up the guts. There you go. Nice drive, bud. Righto, Anthony's up next. Let's see how he goes with the Opus. He's chosen to take that same left-hand line that I did, and it's paid off. He's made it up there with zero issues. Sam's also opted for the left-hand line, and together, we've all made it to the top. However, the best is yet to come. I think I've uh, mentioned this a fair bit so far on the old coach road. This track is one of the toughest tracks in Cape York. Not from how hard it is to drive, but just the corrugations and the rocks. It's really, really difficult on suspension every component of your body and your vehicle. But one thing that's um, that's really helped me on this track is one of the latest of mods I've done is the old Sooty here. I've chucked in a pair of Stratos seats. Now these are the bucket seats and um, they really support me in here. I can adjust the lumbar. That plus a working aircon, I reckon, I've uh, had just about the best trip on this um, old coach road. It's been super comfortable, not to mention it saved the old back. I reckon um, if you're gonna do a lot of corrugations, a lot of tough tracks, 
Well, a set of uh, straight off seats is definitely the way to go in my opinion. Well, we've been talking about it. Now, it's time to act on it. This right here is the biggest rock step you'll find on the old coach road. And it's an absolute doozy. Well, mate, this is exactly what you call roadworks, mate. Look at that. I know, there's been a lot of hands to make this light work, hopefully. Uh, over, the, over the years, I, I'm not gonna say anything. I'm just gonna have a go at it and see how we go. <laughs> First and foremost, though, well, we've gotta get the camera car up. Yeah, it's gonna. It's, it's heavily loaded yeah, too, mate. It's gonna. Got a it's, heavy rear end. That'll um probably clear most of these rocks by the time it gets Spin up there. Him back yeah. So let's see if we can get him up, and yeah. then uh, it just continues up. Does. What's with the divots up there? Is that it's where the carts used to come down? Do you reckon I, it is? Yeah, I reckon. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon it is. There it's would have been a lot, cool. a lot, a lot of traffic cool. on this. Pretty cool. Imagine, through. imagine with a horse and cart. We got it pretty easy in comparison. I reckon a horse would get up that, to be honest with you. <laughs> He'd struggle a bit. We'd have to put a few more rocks in for him, but. All right, let's get out of the way. We'll use horsepower. Oh, we've got to get the big Newell on GU up, so... Uh, the GU. I reckon we get right yep. out of the way. Vic can do it. I know the Toyota will, so... <laughs> yeah, out, of the, out of the way, mate. All right. The big GU is a heavy truck, but she's street legal with a GVM upgrade. The boys pack all their gear in the back, and at times, Oi! she reminds me of a dancing hippo. <laughs> you got this, but Shuri? she does make it through most challenges unscathed. That's it. That'll do. That wasn't pretty, but it's got us into a good spot to winch the camera car the rest of the way up. With that obstacle out of the way, the camera truck can now get to the top of the hill and the camera men can come back down and film us. Ooh, look what's happened here. The camera car has spat all of these rocks out from under this ledge, so we're gonna do a bit of track building before sending the D-Max up. You couldn't get any better than that. I don't think so. Put a little toll booth in here. Away you motor motors a couple of bucks ago. That could be the old uh, yep. support of Ocean Beer Fund. Could be. Mm. Old Coach Road tolls. Let's see how it goes. Like it. All right, let's give it a go. All right, line her up, line her up. I felt something. One thing you gotta be really conscious with when driving rock steps like this, when you get that front over, the rear's gotta come over. Now what normally happens is your tail shaft can sometimes be the lowest point on a rock step. You give it too much berries, you can actually bend, twist, even snap that in half. So what's happened here, the D-Max has come down, we've actually heard it hit the tail shaft. It's fine, but now he's just gonna go straight into neutral and use the winch. Instead of trying to drive and spin that tail shaft a lot, you just chuck it in neutral and let the winch do the work, you can um, save your tail shaft. All right, I got the vehicle in neutral. I'm just going to let that winch pull me up and over that lip with a bit of luck. See so how we go. That's it. Really hung up here. Yeah, it's moving. That's it. I might be able to have a bit of drive. All right, you're, you're off the tail shaft anyway. That feels better. Simple as that, folks. Simple as that. A little bit of mechanical sympathy there saved that tail shaft. If I'd given that a drive, it should have been all over. There's a couple more rock steps up at the top, but they're all quite small. I'll park the D-Max out of the way and give Shauno a crack. Yes. Yes. <laughs> there we go. We're up, boys. That bank right there is really undercut. And of course, I've spat all those rocks out in the D-Max. So we're just going to do a bit more track maintenance right here. And then Shauno can have a proper crack. Quite a challenge, I reckon. It doesn't look that hard. Like, I should theoretically drive straight up this, but I'm not going to be surprised if all that timber moves around and I get stuck up. I don't want to do any damage to my tail shaft. Yeah, that's probably pretty good line, Oh! Try to send it up, mate. No chance. You can see quite clearly what happened there. Sean I came up, front came up, and then the back's just spat everything out completely, and he's come back underneath that undercut rock, which means his tail shaft's probably about there on the rock. No point in continuing, he ain't gonna drive it. We'll winch him up through here. That was spectacular. 
Sean O's jumped on the winch and just like I did in the D-Max, he's put Sooty in neutral and is letting the winch do all of the work so that he protects that tail shaft. This is one of the most committing and probably difficult lines you'd ever try and take a trailer up. Big vertical rock step, sandwiched on both sides by two big rocks. Panel damage is quite high on the list of uh, things that could go wrong, but um, so snapping drivetrain components and trailer components. So he's got to take it pretty easy here. He's got a winch on his vehicle. He follows the right line, we built it up. He shouldn't have any dramas, but he wanted these trailers tested and it's exactly what the old coach road is all about. Testing everything, every component of your vehicle, your trailer, and even yourself sometimes. Say, including him. <laughs> yeah, exactly right, I'll call him up. Yeah, mate, we're ready for you. Beautiful, mate, coming up now. That's it, that's it. That one. That's, that's good, because you won't have to tire on that other yeah. side, so. That's it. So you a bit, that way. Stop it there, mate. Now, that's a pretty good effort when you consider he's towing a trailer, yet he got to the same spot as everyone else. From here, it's a no-brainer. We're going to jump on the winch and get the whole lot up the track. Well, that's a really gnarly place to take a trailer, and he's driven that really well. Got those fronts up and nearly got the back up, to be honest. It was a bloody good drive. And um, lots of crashing and banging, but the trailer's still in one piece. And... Um, Old Coach Road, almost a big tick from us, nearly done. Sambo said he wants to give this a red hot go, so we're going to give him every chance possible. All right, we've built this up as much as we possibly can. We've got Sam up now. I think the trick for him is going to be just to crawl it up. Got that front locker, and if we can just go up slowly and not push those logs out, I think he'll crawl his way to the top. Right on, mate. Probably the biggest rock step I've ever done. Three cars in front had to winch, but none had a front locker, so... See how we go. Oh, and he's done it. It looked touch and go there for a second, but that front locker has just pulled him up and over. Ooh. That is a good drive, mate. I wish I could say I drove that, but I had nothing to do with it. That was all front locker. But we got up. Now good. One less car to winch. You! I tell you what, it's times like these we are absolutely stoked to have a quality winch like the Dominator X and Dominator X Extreme on the vehicles. No matter what track, no matter if it's a heavy camera car or we're towing a camper trailer, they've proven themselves over and over again. We would use our winches way more in just one trip than many of you folks might in your lifetime. But that one time you need your winch to work, you want to know it's going to. The Dominator X winches have repeatedly, without fail, got us out of trouble all across Australia. With the challenge of Folders Hill well and truly done and dusted, we move on to the final stage of the Old Coach Road. Well boys, I think this might be, uh, if memory serves me correctly, right toward the end of the Old Coach Road. Yeah, what a cracking part of the world, mate. Yeah, you'd be hard pressed to find a more fun track up in the Cape, I reckon. It's uh, one of those ones that absolutely has to be done. It's got to be on your bucket list. Yeah, it ticks all the boxes. It's got heaps of, like, tricky bits, you know. As a four-wheel driver, you've got to love these sort of tracks. And the odd hidden campsite, too. I was a bit surprised. I thought once we got away from Maytown, we might struggle a bit, but we found some absolute crackers. Yeah, highly recommend this one, mate. How'd the trailer go, Anthony? Yeah, mate, excellent. Um, so many rocks up here. I'm, I'm almost surprised how well I've handled it. We've been up here for three weeks now, and this trailer's just eaten everything. Um, I'm, I'm over the moon with it. Yeah, it certainly uh, held up pretty good, mate. I'm surprised it's been hard going. What about you, Sam? Mate, loved every minute of it. I mean, this particular track, the bumps and rocks have certainly realigned a few things in the old, uh, in the old spine, but no, it's been fantastic. Well, we're not out of the woods yet, mate. We've still got a little bit to go, so let's push on ever so slowly and get to the end of this track, eh? Yeah, sounds like a plan, mate. Sounds like a plan. Just on nightfall, we arrive at the tiny town of Laura, which signifies two things. The end of the old coach road and a cold beer. Boys, what a trip. Cheers, fellas. That is um, old, old time, coach mate. Road, mate. Old, old coach time. road, if you haven't done it before, I tell you what, one thing I would suggest is don't bother sharing. 
No. Just don't bother sharing because he's. I'm going to share when I get home. No, I'm that's committed, him. mate. I've, I've actually got a suntan. Because <laughs> it's that, that dust on the old coach. She is next level. But it is a beautiful track. It stays on the ridge tops for a whole. And that's not something we advertise very much. You stay on the ridge tops for a long period of time. Yeah. So there's always views. Plenty of campsite, heaps of firewood. Yeah. And yeah. I, what do you reckon you'd do it? Average person, a couple of days? Two days would be Two comfortable. Days the comfortable. Be super nice. Super yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. Sammy? How'd you go, mate? Mate, loved every minute of yeah. it. Yeah. Learned stuff about you boys, learned stuff about myself. <laughs> you certainly did that. Learned stuff about the 80. <laughs> it's been great. You've tested that trailer to the absolute nth degree. It's absolutely surprising, mate. Beautiful. Loved it? Loved it. You've got a couple of issues we might need to look at. Oh, well, also the vehicle too, mate. <laughs> <laughs> the old, old sorry, she's, um, she's done some hard tracks she up has, here. And um, oh, look, there's nothing that I can't spin a few spanners on to get it sorted, but that's oh, what, you know, I've got a bit of time at home, I'll get it in the shed. I'd and... throw an entire toolbox at it if I here, rather than just a couple of spanners. <laughs> Folks, look, we come up here every year, we're going to be up here again next year. I reckon we push the envelope a bit and come up a bit even yeah. earlier. Even earlier, yeah. See so how we go, see so how we go, Folks, old coach road, if you've never done it, I up on the bucket list. Absolutely. Right yep. up there for right now. There. For us, this is our future. <laughs> we will see you next time on Four Drive Action. Boys, you! Yeah. Yes. Should have set up camp earlier, I told you. I told you that. <laughs> Here we go. I'm sleepy. <laughs> so much easier. Coming up, my favourite part of any four-wheel drive action episode, the outtakes. But before we get into them, let's have a look at some of the gear we used on this particular adventure. Mate, Cape York. It's been epic. Look at us. We're absolutely <laughs> covered, but smile from ear to ear like little grinning chimps, mate. I tell you, if you've not been to Cape York, guys, it's got to be at least your top two or three in Australia. It's Look at us. Yeah. This is the best time we could possibly have had. Now, we'd like to take this time right now just to outline some of the bits and pieces that we've used on our trucks that have made the last three and a half weeks possible for us. You go first, mate. mate. I was just about to, about to say, you know, fuel's one of those things that gets a lot of people worried when they come yep. up here because you don't know what sort of fuel you're going to get. You can get good fuel, you can get bad fuel. Yep. Now, especially if you've got a common rail diesel, I say any diesel, yep. but get yourself a pre-filter. Now, I've got a pre-line pre-filter by Man and Hummel. I've also got a Provent catch can. I reckon the combination of those two gives me the confidence. doesn't matter where I go in Australia, I can get any sort of fuel yep. and I'm not going to hurt my engine. So I reckon that is a must. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You mentioned the word confidence, mate. You're going to come up the Cape. You're gonna get stuck. Yes. It's not. It's Over not. Here. It's not. <laughs> it's not where. Or it, it, you're gonna get stuck. And folks, even if you're with other people, sometimes you've just got to winch. There's no yeah. other way. You're not gonna get snatched out. You got to winch. And so, for me, I've had to rely on the old King's Dominator Extreme a number of times on this trip. And without it, well, me and the DMAX would have been at home up here. We'd have to live up here somewhere. So, <laughs> I've used the Dominator Extreme, and it's just it just works, mate. I don't know the size of my <laughs> winches. I'm not a smart man. But you push a button, and it just works. So it just works. Get yourself halfway decent winch. Come up the Cape. Have a ball. Now, obviously, mate, we travel in a convoy, yep. and it goes without saying that communication through the convoy is really important. But should you get stranded from the groove, you take a wrong turn or something, get lost, you can jump on that UHF really quickly. Mobile phones don't work out here. And I reckon that the features on my XRS, the old GME, mate, they, I wouldn't be here without it. You gotta have comms, mate. You gotta Absolutely. have comms. Absolutely. Folks, this is us. This is where we've done three, look at us, three and a half weeks <laughs> up the Cape. We really are due for a shower and a cold beer. If you've liked what you've seen, of course you've liked what you've seen. I keep saying that. Of course you've liked what you've seen. Best four-wheel drive show in the world. Put a comment down below because both Sean and I look at the comments all the time. If you've got a question, ask in the comments. Subscribe, like, do all that stuff because four-wheel drive action comes to you every week. Look, we've got to get to that uh, Laura pub, it's mate. A meeting, very I, important meeting. I tell you, no, we actually do because we need to find out where we're going next. Ah. So we'll get a dartboard and map of Australia. <laughs> we'll figure out exactly where we are next time. So make sure you tune in to the world's greatest YouTube channel, four-wheel four -wheel drive, drive action. action. Like, you've got to say it to you, bud. As a <laughs> Is that a wide shot? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so dusty. Oh. <laughs> That's a hole. There's a cameraman there. He wouldn't have been there in the 1870s. Well, I got chooks at home, and none of my chooks have ever done this before. <laughs> no, if mine did, I'd, I'd throw them out. <laughs> 200,000 people were through these valleys out through here. 200,000? Not that many at all. That's a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> no, there wasn't that many at all. Yeah. Yeah. Can you, can, you, can you eat those or grab do you have to, Well, I'll cook them first, to be honest with you. Really? Yeah. That, oh, I wouldn't eat them. Hang about. Oh, i got to cook them. Yeah, you got to cook them. You have to cook them. <laughs> Actually, you really do need to cook them. These, these are raw. Oh, uh, heck. So what I'm going to do with these sausages? <laughs> I put some things in my mouth tonight that I regret. <laughs> you will walk up this with an extra locker of the traction device. Finish that off there, mate. Go and put the rest of that. Look at the yeah, colour of it. It's got that the, green rotten look. Clean, clean the knife off a little bit. Look at that. It's got that green, just that colour uh, well, of nature. <laughs> did we forget the chilies? Yeah, we did. 
Forgot. <laughs> Simply forgot. Wow, geez, it's really strong. Put your head in there and have a really deep sniff. Yeah. yeah. Come have a look at that just so I remember yeah. them. <laughs> yep. I've, yeah. pr I've committed that to memory. Yep. No, it's not bad. Not bad at all. You gotta, gotta really go. This is a whole experience yeah, right now. Yeah, I'm okay? experienced. That'll do, donkey. That'll do.